What's up, everybody? Matt Moran here for another weekly update. So there's lots of news to go over this week. Um, and the first, I'm sure many of you have already seen this. I keep getting tagged in uh, people that are reposting this stuff. Several photos of the new Bronco and Bronco Sport were both revealed uh, or leaked this week. Not revealed. Ford is not happy these are out. Um, but the images here come thanks to the Raptor connection on Instagram. And so it shows a Ford R version on an assembly line here. Um, kind, of, you know, kind of like the hand-built prototypes, not an actual normal production line because they're not in production yet. Um, but as you can see, it has a lot of retro cues from the original Bronco along with the removable hardtop roof with a roof rack, which is a cool little development. And then Juggernaut Performance's Facebook page showed a picture of the two-door version here, um, which looks great as well. And um, this Juggernaut uh, page, they also uh, shared a dealer memo that is uh, telling dealers to expect the reveal of the Bronco on March 18th, which is next Wednesday. Uh, so hopefully we'll have some official pictures then, as well as all the details and everything on the Bronco. Um, there was a, supposed to be an actual reveal event. I don't know if that's happening anymore. Um, and so most likely it's just going to be an online thing, but um, hopefully we'll actually have official Bronco stuff next week for all of you who are in interested in uh, finding out about that. But Bronco Sport Forum also showed some leaked images of the baby Bronco, which we now know is named Bronco Sport. And these images come thanks to user Scotty on that forum. And so as you can see, uh, that name is very clearly on the back there, Bronco Sport. And um, this one's going to be escape-based, remember. So it's probably going to sell very well because it's going to have boxy styling, as you can see here. And uh, we'll have a you know much more comfortable ride than the regular Bronco. Um, and so it uh, makes a lot of sense. And I think it looks good. You know, I think especially the front end styling looks a lot like the new Land Rover Defender, which I think is a very good thing. And a lot of people were saying it actually reminds them of the original Ford Escape, which I think is a very valid point as well. And I know a lot of SUV shoppers want something boxy. This is why the Kia Telluride is selling so well, and a lot of the um, less aggressive looking crossovers aren't selling as well. And so I think this is going to be a very winning formula, and I think we'll see tons of these things on the road uh, as soon as they start producing them. But uh, so this Bronco Sport was supposed to be revealed at the New York Auto Show, uh, but the news this week that just came out is that the New York Auto Show has been postponed until late August now because of the coronavirus, uh, like everything else. And so um, it's not happening. Uh, many of the drive programs I was supposed to go on here over the next couple of months have also been canceled. Um, so content might get interesting here over the next few months. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Uh, but anyway, um, so yeah, there's no reveal for New York now. So I'm not sure when the to expect this Bronco Sport and its reveal. Um, I'm sure it'll be something online, but as far as when, I'm not sure. Maybe should maybe still will be around the same time as, uh, you know, uh, early April there for the New York show, kind of around that timing. We'll have to see. Anyway, um, it's also possible it could be revealed at Detroit in June if they wanted to wait that long. Uh, that's a possibility as well. Again, assuming that the Detroit Auto Show still happens in June, we'll have to see uh, how things pan out with all that. But anyway, um, interesting to at least see those pictures for now. The last little bit of Ford news, though, is that according to Automotive News, uh, dealers were shown uh, the small truck that's been talked about that's uh, going to be based on the European Focus platform. It was rumored to be called the Courier. Um, we'll have to see what it is up actually being called. Um, I talked about that. There were some spy photos that came out last year and I talked about it then. But according to this new report, the dealers say the size of the truck actually look a lot like the original Ranger from 1983. So it could be an actual small boxy truck, which I think also would be very much a hit with a lot of people who say they want a true small truck. Now, it'll truly be small, but if, whether it'll be a true truck, um, that seems like it's a little bit more of a stretch. And you see how people are so against the Honda Ridgeline and stuff for not being a real truck. Uh, so I think this might have a little bit of an uphill battle, but I think the sizing at least will be right. Uh, but according to this report, um, they're still planning on running a 2-liter 4-cylinder engine in it and an 8-speed automatic. Basically, the Ford Focus powertrain is what you'll have in this little truck. It'll get front-wheel drive as standard, all-wheel drive being an option, um, and it should arrive sometime in 2021, according to the report. So now uh, we'll have to wait and see how that uh, develops. Mopar Insiders and Allpar this week both put out reports giving new details on the Ram T-Rex, which is the Hellcat-powered Ram that is coming here sometime this year. So Ram officially already teased 
kind of officially teased this uh, truck because obviously we had the T-Rex concept, but then there was also um, this design uh, contest that was being put on by FCA the past couple of weeks. And the front uh, poster for it, I guess, has an image of a Ram that looks like it's the T-Rex version. And sure enough, according to Allpar, the production truck is going to look a lot like that sketch, including the vented hood and the f flared fenders. And according to their report, it'll get the full 707 horsepower from that Hellcat motor as well. There was previous rumors it would do less power but supposedly it will be uh, over 700 and um, the interior is also likely to be well equipped much like other SRT products they're not usually stripped down models a whole lot and so um, that's uh, something that they're talking about here is it'll probably have the 12 inch screen as standard things like that um, and then Mopar Insiders revealed an interesting little tidbit about the interior saying that the steering wheel is going to be getting the paddle shifters from the Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio those glorious alpha metal paddles supposedly it'll get those but they'll actually be lengthened and attached to the steering wheel instead of the steering column like they are on the Alfa um, but those paddle shifters are probably the best paddle shifters in my opinion outside of an exotic car and so that's a very good if you're going to take stuff from a parts bin that is an excellent parts bin to raid and a good part to choose there also they're talking about how um, it'll probably get a traditional shifter not the rotary switch or the column shifter that you see in other ramps so they're going to redesign that center console a little bit for the t-rex version to accommodate that shifter um, and so that's another interesting tidbit here from mopar insiders also they believe that pricing according to mopar insiders uh, was going to be about the same as the raptor with the luxury package since again the ram will be pretty well equipped so that means a starting price of around $70,000 is their guess, which sounds about right. And honestly, I think it still is a good deal at 70 grand because you're going to have way more power than all the competitors and you're going to, you know, be basically around the same price as a Raptor. And so uh, a lot of those Raptor people that have been wanting a V8, Ram will have your solution soon enough. And uh, so awesome to see that. There's rumors it could debut in Detroit in June. Again, we'll see what happens with Detroit, but if Detroit happens, then that's where we can expect this. Otherwise, maybe we'll see something somewhere else. The drive this week was sent uh, some pictures from a source inside GM uh, that they then tweeted out um, and uh, posted this story here, which I'll link the whole story in the description below because there's some extra pictures I'm not going to show here. But basically, what it's showing is a faster version of the CT5V, which we knew was coming, with a manual transmission for an interior shot there, showing the manual. Um, and so this provides proof to back up the reports we've had over the past several months saying that the CT5V in its faster version will have a manual and the CT4V is going to have a manual as well. Um, and so this actually provides that proof. So the shifter looks like it's right out of a Camaro ZL1, which is great because the transmission is most likely going to be right out of a Camaro ZL1. So is the engine. You know, it's going to use basically the same motor as the old CTSV um, and then just pair it up with a manual, which the CTSV did not offer for the most recent generation. So this is not only is it continuing on with the awesomeness of the CTSV, but it's making it even better by offering the manual. So I am so stoked for this car because the CTS-V was still was a car I loved so much and that with a manual and even better dynamics than what we already had on the CTS, that is going to be probably my pick as far as sports sedans go. But anyway, um, so other things here, you can see on the uh, steering wheel there, there's a V button, um, which is metal. It looks very similar to like the idea of the Z button on the new Corvette steering wheel. If you watch my new Corvette review, you'll know that that button basically puts you into a sportier driving mode for a temporary amount of time um, and then goes back to the normal mode. And so um, I'm guessing it'll do the same thing here in the V. We'll have to wait and see, but... A very cool little touch there. Um, but yeah, the seats are also going to... It seems like they're right out of a Corvette uh, as far as the new Corvette's GT2 seats. It seems like that's what they'll be using here in the CT5V Plus or whatever they call this new version. Um, but I will link it in the description below the uh, article so you guys can check out all the pictures and uh, check out the back end as well, which also looks good. For some other crazy Cadillac news, that hand-built Celestique sedan that I talked about last week, it was shown as part of uh, Cadillac's electric EV future and GM's EV future. Um, I talked about that last week and uh, you know I was saying how it's going to be hand built and it's going to be a very expensive model. I didn't even realize how expensive it was going to be. So the Wall Street Journal's Mike Kalias uh, talked with uh, Cadillac's president Steve Carlisle about it and while this isn't official, he claims that um, the president of Cadillac told him that um, this new Cadillac 
this Celestique model will be launching in the middle of 2022 and will cost at least $200,000. The, ex the exact quote was something like, it'll cost six figures and the first number won't be the number one. And it's going to be like, it's starting in the twos somewhere. So like, we're talking, we're not talking a nice Cadillac. We're talking like they're going after Bentley with this model. And, um, I, you know, Cadillac used to be able to do that. I mean, back in the 50s and stuff, you know, some of those Cadillacs, if you converted the inflation today, the money, I mean, some of those top end Cadillacs were over $100,000. Um, and so, you know, this is even a leap beyond that. But if they, I really do believe in Cadillac and I want them to be the standard of the world again. And I think if they really, really like, knock the the doors off of this thing it, they can make it amazing so we'll have to wait and see um i'm just excited they're even going for something like this i mean they think they said they were going to only going to build you know maybe a few hundred of these and hand build them so they'll be very rare uh, but it actually if you look at history recent history too lincoln sold out of that continental with the uh, suicide doors they sold out of those very very quickly and so I think, you know, those were going for around $100,000 and there was only a couple hundred of those. So if they can have a longer Continental that just has coach style doors, they called them, and it goes for a hundred, I could see how a, you know, super high tech, very expensive electric Cadillac flagship sedan could potentially sell at $200,000 if it is hand built and they really, really pour their heart and soul into it. Um, but anyway, I just find that really interesting. So we'll have to wait and see. Obviously, we've got a couple of years till we see how that develops. Last little bit of Cadillac news here is that they've officially delayed the debut of the Lyric SUV, the, the electric one that I talked about last week. Um, it was supposed to be debuted at a standalone event in early April with a public reveal in New York. Again, since New York isn't happening, that all got thrown out. And also, they just don't want to invite journalists to an event and uh, have them get sick. So um, I think basically every automotive event is going to be canceled here for the foreseeable future, it seems. They told Autoblog, uh, please know we are working to reschedule the reveal as soon as possible. Um, and so we'll have to see. I don't think it's a huge rush to reveal this one, considering it's probably going to be a while before they can actually start building these. I think it's going to be a little bit. So probably not a huge rush there, but hopefully we see that sometime soon. For something we actually did get a little bit of a reveal of this week, Honda revealed two pictures of the new 2021 refreshed Honda Odyssey. So this was supposed to debut in New York again, um, and so I think they're just going to probably just post the pictures at some point, you know, in April, I'm guessing. But uh, it's got a totally different front end here with this new grille, headlights, and bumper. The other details they shared so far are that it's going to have Honda sensing as standard on all trims now, and it now has a low-speed follow capability and pedestrian emergency braking for that Honda sensing system. All also, the rear seat reminder will now use the cabin watch camera to actually show you a picture of whatever it is that's in that back seat um, so you don't leave it behind. Um, that's a cool little touch. The other picture here shows the refreshed interior, which will have this updated climate control system and a few other small touches. Um, and so I'll go into more depth once we actually have all the pictures of everything. But basically, it's you know some minor stuff. There's no mechanical changes or anything really large, um, but a nice little refresh to the Odyssey there. And I'm not sure when the full reveal is going to happen, though. Uh, but like I said, probably sometime in April, I'm guessing. Hyundai has teased the 2021 Elantra that it'll be uh, debuting online next week. So at least we know when this one's coming. They claim in the press release, though, that it's going to return to its sports sedan roots for the Elantra. Um, I don't know. I mean, the newer ones are sporty, but I don't think it ever started as a sporty model. I could be wrong. I don't know. That just kind of was a head scratcher. But anyway, it's they're also saying it's going to be on a new vehicle platform, and it's going to be longer, lower, and wider, which certainly will make it sportier. And from the teaser here, it looks like it borrows some styling from the Sonata, both outside and inside, but has lots of potential. It does look very unique up front there, again, from the little bit we can see so far. Hopefully, they still have a sporty version. Hopefully, that sporty version is still available with a manual, because they did get rid of the manual for this last year or two of the Elantra Sport, and I hope that they reintroduce it here with this new version. We'll have to wait and see. Maserati has teased the MC20 uh, sports car that they just recently revealed the name for a couple of weeks ago. And so this new update here is that they have started testing the prototype, which uses the actual production body, not the hacked up mule that uh, was previously teased. And it looks great so far from what we can see. We know it's going to be mid-engined and uh, 
you know, is going to be Italian, so it should be pretty good looking. We'll have to wait and see how that pans out. Uh, and I just like that Maserati has given us some updates every step of the way on what's happening with it. That's very cool. Um, there's also another camoed Italian car that was unofficially teased this week uh, by Instagram user Alan Lambo. So he's claiming this is the new Lamborghini Huracan STO, which stands for Super Trofeo Omelegato. I probably butchered that, but it looks like a street legal version of the Super Trofeo Evo uh, race car. And uh, um, so that's most likely what it will be, and uh, it's going to probably be lighter, have better handling, you know, all the usual improvements, although it sounds like it might not get any more power. Car and Driver recently spoke uh, with Aston Martin CEO about the new twin-turbo V6 hybrid powertrain that they're developing for the Valhalla and Vanquish uh, mid-engine sports cars that are coming in the next couple of years. He revealed that this engine is actually going to be the one that will be replacing the AMG twin-turbo V8s that they're currently using in a bunch of their models. Um, and so that V6 will replace it in the future. So he's quoted as saying, Mercedes have made no secret of where their engine technology is moving to, and obviously we don't foresee a four-cylinder engine in our Astons, so we've got to make up our own journey, or we've got to make our own journey. So... Um, you know, the recent news that, you know, the next gen uh, C63 AMG is going to be using a four cylinder turbo combined with a hybrid thing to give it 600 horsepower, um, all that type of stuff. I think Aston Martin probably knows a little more than we do. And that means that that's almost certainly happening for AMG. And so Aston Martin is going a different direction. And so I don't think that's anything to be too upset about, um, you know, he also did reassure uh, that the performance will still be a step up because he says there's no way our customers are going to expect a step backward. Um, and so, I mean, the v I think V6 engines in general sound great, and if anyone can tune them to sound good, Aston Martin certainly could. So um, I have every confidence that this will be great. And again, we're talking about models that currently use the V8s. We're talking about Vantage, DB11, and DBX. Especially DBX, no one's going to care. Uh, DB11, you know, there might be some, but then they can just go get the V12 versions if they like the AMR or the DBS, you know, Super Legeras. Or, uh, you know, the Vantage, um, you know, that one would be kind of a bummer, but hopefully, uh, again, the V6 sounds fantastic. And I mean, it could just be like a, you know, much faster, more impressive version of like the V6 F-Type. If it sounds anything like the V6 F-Type, I will have no complaints. I'll listen to that V6 all day long. So, um, and again, they are still remaining committed to the V12 as well. So it's not like all hope is lost. They still have a glorious V12 that they have no plans of getting rid of. They actually said the V12 production is going to remove... They're going to move it from Germany, where it's at currently. They're going to actually start producing it in the UK. So they're already making plans for where they're going to build the V12 in the future and stuff. That V12 is safe. So they can do the, whatever they want with the rest of the stuff. I think there's no issues with the V6. So uh, cool to hear that. And the last two stories this week are about BMWs. Uh, so first, uh, BMW this week confirmed to Autoblog that the electric iX3 won't be coming to the United States. And uh, this is just for now. Um, a BMW spokesperson told them the next BMW EV to come to the U.S. market will be the iNext, which goes into production in the middle of 2021, followed by the BMW i4, which begins production towards the end of 2021. They didn't give a reason, but I'm guessing the reason is the same reasoning that Mercedes is not bringing the EQC here for another year. It's that they have to hurry up and try and uh, cut their fleet emissions uh, for CO2 for Europe because starting in 2021, they're going to get fined heavy with their fleet averages being too high. So I think, again, like Mercedes BMW is worried about those fines, and so they're going to prioritize the European demand and not even offer it for us here in the States because they want to send every single electric vehicle they can to Europe. Um, and I can't blame them. I mean, they're big fines. Uh, but yeah, so I think that's the main reason. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm sure the iX3 eventually will come here once they've sorted out their situation in Europe. Uh, but interesting nonetheless. The last little bit of news here uh, is some good BMW news from Autocar. And they're reporting that BMW has greenlit a next-gen version of the 2 Series Coupe that will actually be rear-wheel drive again and totally unrelated to that new 2 Series Grand Coupe that uh, you know has been revealed recently that uh, most people probably aren't in love with. And so the front-wheel drive-based sedan 2 Series was also going to get its own M version, but even though they'll both be called M2, they'll be totally separate. That um, four-door car is going to be using a boosted version of the four-cylinder that's currently in the M235i version of that four-door car. I can't say coupe anymore because coupe doesn't mean anything, and so it's confusing if I don't say that. Um, so anyway... Um, so that's going to use a four-cylinder that's boosted. It's going to do about 400 horsepower in that four-door car. 
The two-door rear-wheel drive M2 will be based on the Z4 and Supra platform, uh, meaning a longitudinal engine, and likely it'll be running a, a detuned version of the three-liter twin-turbo straight-six motor that's found in the X3M. Um, and in those, it does almost like 500 horsepower, uh, but in here, it'll be doing about 420 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque, according to Autocar in this report. And they say at least 420. It could be a little bit more. They also report that the six-speed manual will live on, yes, uh, uh, but the seven-speed dual-clutch transmission will be replaced by a regular eight-speed automatic. Probably an eight-speed ZF automatic, which is like the best automatic out there. So um, I don't think that's going to be um, you know, a heartbreaker either. But that's awesome if they're keeping the manual around. We know that they are also keeping the manual around with the new M3 that's coming. And so all of this sounds very, very good for BMW. It sounds like a lot of car companies are making some great decisions here. And, uh, you know, with Cadillac doing the manual on the Vs, then you have uh, this news from BMW and stuff, all kinds of good stuff. So um, great to hear that. Um, and the last little bit of news from Autocar about these models is Autocar says that the new two-door will be shown next year and the new M2 will be arriving in 2022. So uh, kind of fitting. That's when we'll be seeing that supposedly. And uh, so, yeah, I'm excited that yeah, hopefully this is an accurate report and it is true. And hopefully that does come to market. But anyway, that's it for all the news this week, guys. So thank you guys very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts and everything in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.